Well, hello, church. I'm glad you're tuning in to my talk to you again this week. You know, if you're keeping track, this is our fifth Sunday here at Aviano Baptist Church that we have not met personally face-to-face -face on Sunday mornings. I hope that you're making sure that on these Sundays, these weekends, that you as an individual or as a family or as a couple are finding an online church service somewhere that you can tune into. We all have our favorite churches. Maybe it's one that you've been a part of in the past, or maybe it's one you know of or a favorite preacher that you have. I encourage you to make sure that you tune in, tune in individually or with your family on Sunday, sometime this weekend, to listen and to celebrate, to worship together uh, to a good online service. We don't have the capability here to do that live, or to live stream it, but we are wanting to record each Sunday, each weekend, uh, just a talk together. I want to share some thoughts with you and encourage you, and uh, at least to bring this time of uh, time uh, uh, for us together to do it virtually, even though we can't do it face to face. I'm hoping that very soon we'll have the opportunity to meet one another face to face and to be a part of what God is doing uh, together. If you're listening through this uh, Aviano Baptist Church, uh, our Facebook page, you're listening today, maybe for the first time, I should introduce myself to you again. I'm Gary Preston. I'm here for 33 uh, months while Pastor Barry is in the States for surgery for Janine. And so we've been here, my wife Suzanne and I, since the early March. And though we haven't met most of you personally yet, we're thankful to be here. We want you to know you're not forgotten. You're not abandoned. Uh, we, I pray for you uh, daily, as uh, does Suzanne. Barry and Jeannie continue to pray for you. And we're here to help and be a part of what God is doing here and help you in any way we can individually. So I hope that we've uh, let you know that we've appreciated those of you who have reached out and introduced yourself uh, virtually and uh, through the Facebook and uh, uh, email. I want you to continue to do that if we can be of help to you in any sort of way. I'll also tell you that our plans for April are at this point that the uh, home confinement will end this week as far as we know and we're looking to begin and resume public services on April 5th and for Easter as well. That would be Palm Sunday and then Easter that's not been confirmed by the Italian authorities, so keep posted. If you hear of information through the base about that, uh, be sure to pass that along so we're all on the same page in terms of the uh, the plans and what's a lot being allowed. But that's our plan right now. We're working toward that, and then we'll confirm that as uh, time goes along this week. I have been also not just recording these on the weekend, these talks to you, but sending a missive in writing during the middle of the week. And I perhaps you read that this last week. It was on our Facebook page uh, as well. Uh, just writing to you this week about uh, the whole thing of waiting. We're doing a lot of waiting right now. I know you are and I am as well. Uh, during our time of waiting, I've encouraged us to use this as an opportunity to sharpen our listening to God, listening to one another, but particularly listening to God during this time, and also to see God at work and to strengthen our faith, to grow in our faith. Uh, I hope that you're using this, allowing God to use this time of waiting to sharpen those skills as well. Speaking of growing our faith during the time of waiting, it struck me this week uh, that faith is an odd element in many ways, isn't it? It fluctuates in our lives. Sometimes we wish it we did it didn't, that it was just steady and stable and never changed, but faith fluctuates. Sometimes it's so strong it could go through any storm of life. And then there are times we have to assess our faith as maybe on autopilot, just kind of coasting, moderate. And then there are times in life when our faith is weak, maybe close to even to failing us. In fact, remember Jesus prayed for Peter, one of his closest friends and disciples, when Peter was going to go through a time of testing and sifting. And Jesus said, Peter, I pray for you that your faith will not fail you. That your faith will not fail. Jesus recognized that faith sometimes is strong. Sometimes it wanes, is moderate or weak. 
I've been reading through the four Gospels during this time when we're sequestered at home. Uh, reading through that, and this last week I was in the Gospel of Mark. And I came to a chapter that was familiar and a story that's very familiar, but one that caught my attention in a special sort of way. And I want to share that with you a little bit, some thoughts and observations from that today for just a few minutes. I suspect that the story may be familiar to many of you. It's in Mark chapter 4. It goes like this, beginning in verse 35. That day, when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go to the other side. They had had a busy day of ministry, and as the day was coming to a conclusion, Jesus says, it's, it's time to depart. I want to take you somewhere else to the other side of the lake. They are there at the Lake of Galilee or the Sea of Galilee. So leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. And while they're out on the lake, a furious squall, a storm came up. And the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. And Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? And he got up and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And then the wind died down. And it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified. And they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Reading that story again reminds me that there's a thin line between fear and faith, isn't there? How's your fear factor this week? Is your faith tottering back and forth from strong to weak to moderate? Have you crossed over the line sometimes into fear, being fearful? God, what are you doing? What's happening? What, what am I doing? How do I navigate my way through this time? Remember Fear Factor? <laughs> it was a TV show from the early 2000s. Maybe you recall that. A TV show where it brought people to face some of their deepest fears through severe challenges that they had to undergo. All of that in exchange for some grand prize. And so people had to confront their fears, maybe of spiders or maybe of heights or water or whatever, all kinds of crazy things to confront those fears and then to realize they could come through those and there was a reward on the other side. Maybe this story is a little bit like a fear factor. Jesus taking his disciples through a storm of life to expose their fear, but to bring them through that to the other side, to faith. Although, of course, this sea storm was no game. But Jesus still used it to show that their fear, out of their fear, he could cultivate deep faith, even as he does in our lives. We begin just some observations, a few. It won't take a lot of time to do this. But a few observations. First, that Jesus assured his disciples as they got into the boat, we're going to the other side. We're not just going out on the lake and see what happens. We're going to the other side. It was an assurance for them when they got out on the lake and the storm started. They could have held on to that and realized that God's got this. He's taking us to the other side, even though we may encounter a storm. I want to encourage you during this season of the coronavirus you're at home or you're locked down. You can't move around like you normally would. Your kids are there. Or maybe family's there. And maybe work has been curtailed in some ways. That God's got this. 
God's got you. God's got your situation. That nothing happens to you outside of his plan for you. And then it's interesting. As their fear eclipsed their faith, they asked Jesus. They woke him and they said, don't you care? Don't you care that it looks like we're going to drown and you're silent? And then he didn't answer them directly. Rather, he got up and he simply demonstrated his care. He rebuked the wind and the storm and it became absolutely calm. I find it instructive that Jesus rebuked the storm, not the disciples. He understood that life's storms at time create fear. That's a human response. But he also demonstrated that he can use that fear to cultivate faith. Jesus understands, I think, that there's this thin line between fear and faith. And so I'd encourage you, if you go bouncing back and forth at times, as we all do, crossing that line between fear and faith, don't beat yourself up. Don't shame yourself. Realize that God understands that too. And Jesus wants to use our fear to cultivate our faith. And learn that Jesus does care. And we ask him that sometimes. God, you're silent. Don't you care? I think later on in his life, Peter remembered that. He remembered that he questioned whether God cared, whether Jesus cared. In fact, he wrote about it in one of the letters he wrote to the church in 1 Peter 5, verse 7. One of those memorable uh, verses that Peter penned, where he says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. I suspect that as Peter wrote those words, his mind went back to years before being on that lake of Galilee when the storm came up. And he, along with the others, said, Jesus, don't you care? And he learned that Jesus does care. And that even though he crosses back and forth, Peter did that thin line between fear and faith, he discovered that Jesus cared, even in the midst of the storm. And so he could write that many years later. Cast all your anxiety and fears upon him because he cares for you. And then a final observation that came to me from this passage, that after calming the storm, the disciples turned their focus from the storm to Jesus, the calmer of the storm. And that made all the difference. You see, they had seen him heal. They had watched him overcome the demonic forces. They had heard his amazing teaching in, in the parables. But now they are moved as they see and they experience his awesome power over nature itself. And that allowed them to cross back over that line from fear to faith because they turned their focus from the storm to the one who controls the storm. And that not brought not only peace to the storm and the, the waves of the lake and quieted the rolling of the boat, that brought peace to their hearts. It restored the strength of their faith once again. And so Jesus used their fear to cultivate their faith as he turned their focus back to him in the midst of the storm. I know maybe you, like me, that there have been times in my life 
when I've convinced, I've convinced myself that God's asleep. God's asleep in the storm of my life. And therefore, sometimes I convince myself that he doesn't care. And that can lead to fear or times of uncertainty, disappointment. But I'm glad to know that this story from the life of Jesus and the, his time with the disciples reminds us that we have to learn the lesson and the truth that his silence doesn't mean he's absent. His silence doesn't mean that he doesn't care. Sometimes he's silent. He seems to be sleeping so that he can demonstrate how much he cares, how present he really is, how in control he is even of the storms. And that turns our focus from our storms and away from our fear to the one who calms the storms to Jesus who's in control of the storms. And that renews and restores and strengthens our faith. If you find fear creeping into your life during this season of the coronavirus, for a variety of reasons, primarily because it's a storm we can't control, I encourage you, take some time today or early this week to read again the story of Jesus calming the storm. In Mark 4, verses 35 to 41, if you hadn't written, noted that, written it down. And thank God that he is present. Though he may be silent, he's got this. That his silence doesn't mean he's absent or doesn't care. It's sometimes the opportunity for him to demonstrate how much he cares. And how much he is in control. You turn, we turn our focus to him to calm the storms in our hearts, in our lives, in our families. And turn our control to him, the one who controls these storms. Turns our faith to him. Whatever you might be facing at home. Maybe it's some relational conflict just because you're so much, so much time together. Or fear about the future or, or finances or your own health or the health of a loved one. If you need prayer for encouragement, someone to stand alongside of you during this time, we want to do that. I hope you'll be in touch with us, your church family, in whatever ways we could be of help. Reach out to us. Reach out to your home group leaders, your home group members. Many of them are meeting together virtually online through, through a small groups, a virtual groups, or sending an email or a message to your home group leader, to members of your home group to say, Pray for me during this time. Pray for one another. Stay connected. If you're not in a home group, reach out to us at the church office. You can do that through simply emailing the office, secretary at avianobaptist.church. Or connect with me personally. You can email me or message me on Facebook or email me directly at pastor at avianobaptist.church. We're part of this church family together. We're in it together. We support one another. We move that back, back and forth between over that line, sometimes between fear and faith, but we do it together and we want to connect with you. Thanks for listening to our, my talk today. I look forward to a chance to meet you. And as I said earlier, we'll continue to keep you posted as the news comes out this week about our ability to meet in the coming days, we trust this coming next weekend. But we'll let you know. And if you hear items, please pass that along to us here in the church office as well. God bless you. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. I look forward to seeing you and being in touch very soon.